Hi, I'm Doug McKinley, and you're watching Adoram TV. Adorama TV presents Stay Focused with Doug McKinley. Hi, I'm Doug McKinley, and you're watching Adorama TV. For this segment, we're going to look at making tight close up pictures using macro photography. I suppose the first question to ask is what is macro photography? Well, the short answer is it's extreme close up photography, usually of small subjects, where that subject is greater to or larger than real life. Now, in terms of lenses, we're going to be using a 100mm 2.8. Canon lens today, macro lens. It's a good all round lens. Now, there are other methods to getting macro pictures. You can use close up filters, reversing rings, or extension tubes. But I think if you're going to get serious about macro pictures, then you must try and get yourself one of the dedicated lenses. Now, macro photography can be done either handheld or on a tripod. Now, there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Handheld, you're on the move, you can move quickly, you don't have to worry about setting up every shot. The downsides are, though, that if you don't have a bright sunny day, you're going to be limiting your depth of field on a lens that already has a limited depth of field. So that could cause a problem. Now, the advantages of having a tripod is you've got a stable shooting platform and you don't have to worry about that so much. You can adjust your aperture to 11 or 16 and not worry so much about the shutter speed. Of course, shooting from a tripod, the disadvantages are it's a bit tricky to move it around all the time. Every shot you take from a tripod generally means you're gonna to have to move the whole setup. Now this is gonna depend on weather. If it's a cloudy overcast day you're shooting, you're probably gonna to have to go to the tripod anyhow. And keep in mind that that macro lens is always gonna have a diminished depth of field just by the physics of the lens. Yeah, the great thing about macro is uh, you're always on the lookout for something interesting to shoot. It could be anything, it could be leaves, rocks, anything you might think interesting. Ah, we've got some horse chestnuts. These will do just nicely. Those are fantastic. So I found a subject, a handful of horse chestnuts. Now there are no insect life at this time of year, so we'll have to use what we can find. Next, I want to find a place to shoot from. And unfortunately, there's this nice concrete -y bit here we can use as a, as a macro lab, so to speak. It's nice and elevated. I'm not going to get my knees dirty. It should be easy to shoot from. Now, next up with uh, macro, you're definitely going to need your tripod. Now, there's a little trick you can do with a lot of tripods these days. You can reverse the center post. So basically what you're going to be doing is shooting upside down. It allows you to get close to your subject in a more comfortable position. It just takes a little of a playing around with your pod to get that position right. Now with this pod, this is an enduro pod, it's very simple. You just loosen off the nut, take off the uh, little hook in the center of the post, it's just a screw in, pop it out, take out your stem, make sure you line up the, uh, the brackets, slide it through, reattach the top, and there you have it. Now you've got an upside down shooting position. When it comes to macro stuff, it really helps because you get closer to your subject. With macro photography, the devil is in the details. It's all about making sure you've got everything set up. You have to make sure your, your depth of field is chosen correctly, your focus is right, and your composition is right. Now with most DSLR cameras today, they've got a live view option in the back of the camera, like a TV screen, where you can turn that on and see exactly what you've got. That way you can fine tune all those little bits and pieces. And it's the best way to check your focus because you can zoom in with your, with your, using your zoom button five times or even 10 times just to check the focus. Make sure your barrel is turned to manual focus. And once you're happy with a picture, 
turn off the live view, and it's just a matter of getting the shot. Now we're working on a bit of an overcast day today, so I'm gonna have to put a bit of light onto this subject. And there's two ways we can do that. We can use a flash, a handheld flash, attached to our hot shoe with a cable or with a pocket wizard release. Or we can use a reflector, or we can use both. I think by using both, you get really good control over the light falling onto your subject. So depth of field comes into play now. It's probably the key element in macro photography. In essence, your F number should be about F16. Nothing bigger, nothing wider, to try and keep that subject in focus. Even a small movement in your depth of field is gonna have a major impact on your pictures. So as you're going through the process of taking your macro pictures, don't forget to change your point of view from time to time. Just mix it up a little bit. And keep an eye on the light. It's gonna shift all day long. And don't forget you can give your pictures a boost of light by adding a flash or a reflector or both. And you can use a polarizing filter to help really deepen the color as well. And try to avoid using the auto white balance all the time. Try some of the other settings, the daylight setting, the shady setting, the cloudy setting. Or you can even change the, the Kelvin scale manually. Remember, it's all about experimentation, learning about your camera and how this lens works. Alternatively, you can try focus stacking. This is what the pros do. The camera is firmly mounted on a tripod, composition is in place, and the light is correct and even. You then take a series of images, the first focusing on the back or the front of the subject, and then incrementally refocus along your subject until you come to the end. Then combine those images in the computer to create one image that is tack sharp from end to end. The key is to keep the camera from moving at all. We want to hear about your experiences with macro photography, so get in touch. Now, don't forget to subscribe to Adam TV for more great videos. You can like, comment, or share in this video. And please stop by the Adaram Learning Center for more great tips and tricks. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.